Oh, 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 what'd you say? Nothing. But you can see that we're down here and we're on wrist fight, right? And this comes in. Bam. It works oh my all God. day. Okay. That is great. I know you probably thinking when he when I got him here and he death that I can punch him. No. That's, no, it's that, it's that pain comes so quick. You may think that you're gonna punch. Here? You're not. No, no, you're not. So if I'm going here and I go out here, I add. Oh! It's just Damn. A force multiplier. That's tight times eight. That's <laughs> yeah. 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 The guy hit my buddy here, Devin Taylor. He's a former fighter. You did some fighting. Muay Thai, kickboxing, MMA, any combat sport. I'm all about it. So, and strength coach. If you need a strength coach, yeah. look him up. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Of all the years and all the times I've taught self-defense, we've never really taught self-defense. Because whether you're in jiu-jitsu, MMA class, Krav Maga, what happens? When we get here, we're talking about somebody doing this, and he's going to go into a move, he's going to get into if we're going like this, this is not self-defense. Mm. This is mutual combat, guys. Mm. You have to understand the difference between self-defense and mutual combat. Mutual combat is about engagement. We're in, we're engaging, we're getting ready to fight each other. In self-defense, we're not going to be staying like this. If he pushes me or something, I, I back off and I stay here and I'm like this, and we get in a fight, this is mutual combat or street fighting. Same thing, whether it's sport fighting or whatever. The courts are not going to save you. You're going to jail. Both of you guys have no self-defense rights on this. Self-defense is when somebody may be coming in trying to steal stuff from you, mess with your kids, where your life is in danger. So a lot of these things where I hear all these MMA guys saying, you know, we're doing this type of stuff, and they're saying, well, you're never going to get a wrist lock. Of course not. In mutual fighting, we're not going for wrist locks. Mm -hmm. We're trying to drive through the person, and we're standing here. What's different in the system that I'm teaching right now is that instead of standing up here and facing in this way, if he engages me, my best position is, there's a lot of positions that we'll have in here, clinches and so on. My best position, if he's trying to get hold of me, is to stand beside him. I'm now outside of his area right here. So using things like the swing step, if he's coming in, where I use that swing step, and I could put him back on his heels. So we're not trying to engage, we're trying to disengage in self-defense. Today I'm just going to look at some of the common things where you might have grabs. We mostly have this with the women, but for the guys, you guys that are older, somebody getting a hold of you, you have to understand if they have a strength and a strength coach right here, does this work? So we need to be able to test this and we'll be playing with this. And the idea of this whole system is to become a Houdini or a Matador where you're like, ole, I don't yeah. want to engage with you. Mm. If somebody's walking towards me, I want to be able to move off. Now if he starts coming towards me, I can say here, and still those swing steps when I'm getting off, I'm getting out of the way. I'm not letting him be there. If he comes in at me and I'm constantly out here, I'm not letting him grab at me. That's the idea is to escape, not engage. If you're going to engage, train. Train a lot. You gotta understand, if you're over 50, you may have had black belts, you had all these systems before, but it's different now. Everybody's training full contact. It's a whole different game. And if you're gonna get involved with weapons, this is the other thing that I have a problem with thinking that if he's in here and we get into a weapon situation, he's coming at me like a sport fighter, those mechanics don't work as well. Mm -hmm. So over this time, I'd like to do sort of a discovery program with us yep. where we could come in, we can go through the different things, play with some ideas. Let's look at a couple things that we have here today. Say I have the guy that has his hands up, he punches, he's throwing a punch, and you get this guy that's trying to come in. And he may be trying to get you down here so he can get in and get you wrapped up, right? Mm -hmm. This is a similar thing that could happen with girls or with yourself. They're trying to grab you or they're trying to take you somewhere. Mm -hmm. I want to start off by showing you guys because you guys just say that joint manipulation, small joint manipulation doesn't work. The reason why you don't see small joint manipulation in a lot of sports is because up until your higher belts and for instance, jujitsu, a lot of the systems that use joint locking and sambo, they don't allow this because beginners hurt people mm -hmm. and you ruin them. A small joint can hurt. Let's look at a couple of these today. This is the cross hand grab, which may be him pulling me in. It may be an elbow pick or whatever is coming later. One of the things you want to do, if I'm trying to take this lock, don't let me move it. First rule, don't stay on the railroad track. He's got all his weapons right here. 
if I can get outside and don't go inside to this, because give them your back. What's your number one rule is you want to get off the railroad track. So you want to get outside of his foot and outside of his wrist. If I just step slightly outside of the wrist and I let this elbow tuck under, similar to a baseball swing right here, then the hand goes over nice and easy right here. Mm, this easy. sort of movement right here, if I'm looking at this and I'm just coming in with a sort of like look at it as a golf swing or a baseball swing, and as I step out, I come around the corner, he'll mm. tell you right there, you yes, can feel see. that, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And these work, this is a very light one right here, but there's stuff you can add. So if I'm catching here, as I'm going around, I'm using that weight to go in. Mm. I've got this, there's a couple mechanisms that you can see right here, just for you guys that don't know wrist locks. Wrist locks are a little more intense than what you have to do. You have to really learn how to do them. Let me break this one down. I'll break down a couple with them. First one, I'm getting outside. If I stay in here, I'm pushing against them. I'm going strength against strength. So what I want to use against a line is an arc. And this is how I do this. This tray position, me going in here, this swing is what brings my hips around the corner and redirects. The first thing I need to do is get this tray position here. By having this, I want plate nice and flat and I want to direct the force forward. Mm, I can feel that From there, I'm trapping the hand. If I could trap the hand, this is the most ideal. You just want the fingers, but I want that index finger. And if I could catch the whole hand here, it gives me some advantages later. For instance, if I'm here, I've gone from the tray. I want the hook of my wrist to hook into the hook of his wrist right here. Now, these two fingers right here are used for grip strength. These are directional fingers. I don't want to leave this over because if I leave this over, see how much I could twist? Mm -hmm. Not much. Mm -hmm. If I go here, I have a lot further rotation. A couple things are happening here. Right now, when you're practicing, I'm leaving my elbow out here just so you can see how these me mechanisms happen. I'm coming in, he's grabbed, I'm stepping, going in, closing off. First thing is trapping the hand. I want to go over into the wrist joint right here. Now I want to direct the head, the fingers, my index finger yeah. towards that shoulder to touch. If I want to add an increased pain amount, I push this finger up. And if I want to even increase it more, I squeeze at the same time. Mm -hmm. and you feel that, right? Yes, sir. So we've got the lock here. You can feel it here. Mm -hmm. But if I tuck that in with that baseball swing again, oh, damn. it's effortless power. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> I know you probably thinking when he, when I got him here, and he death that I can punch him? No. No, it's it, that that pain comes so quick. You may think that you're gonna punch. You're not. No, yeah. you're not. And it's, and it's this smooth. Oh yeah. So when he grabs, and usually if he's grabbing in this position, they all call this a pull grip. So he's yeah. taking me somewhere. Mm -hmm. He may be getting that elbow pick, but I'm gonna get off that railroad track, Ooh. right? Ooh. Boom, right here. And once I'm in here, I've got the forward, the downward but it's really that extra tuck of that elbow with that extra baseball swing that Dang. brings it down. Boom! And I can Outta finish here. it right there. Woo hoo hoo! You wanna try it? That's clean. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm grabbing here. So the first move is this tray position. Think of swinging a baseball bat and it's the inside or a golf swing. It's that inside. And as I'm doing it, I don't wanna go linear because he's using strength. If I go linear, he can adjust to stop me right there. It's the arc. I barely ever say step onto a heel, but this is where it's good. Once this heel's stepping, my toes are gonna turn in ah, towards him. So I'm doing this horseshoe Boom. movement, Boom. Ah, okay? I see that. Now, if I just do this, he's holding, and I step outside his shoulders, the reason this works is because the first flat spot is through the lines of his shoulders. If I can step on this angle and go, so you see how it's pushing you? See how he's going through the sides of his feet? That's the first thing I want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be inside his feet because he can anchor really well. Ah, you don't want me like this. Right, so if I'm here, he's gained. He's got a nice stance in here. If I go here and I go towards the shoulder, see how it pushes yeah. you through the outstep, ah. through your instep. See that? Yeah. And this is important for self-defense because you're not going to have an even thing. You may have multiple fighters and often they're going to be more aggressive and a lot more stronger than you. So this is why this is self-defense. Right? It takes a little more thought. It's not as much brute strength, but if you get this, <laughs> it's legit. I'm going to have him try it. He hasn't tried this yet. No, okay? first time. So let me break it down. The first one position here is I'm going to step out, rotate. See how I'm coming here? It's coming around the corner. And I want that tray, I want the elbow in. And I'm coming around and serving it 
forward. Right there. As soon as you just right. put the tray in, yeah. on that, that's already locked. And like, once the tray is there, right I don't there. lose it by going up. Okay. Once you hit the tray, the line of pressure is as though I'm holding this plate and I'm going to be moving with my forearm and my hips. It's like a hip flexor stretch. Mm. If you watch my hips, boom, mm. it's like a hip flexor stretch. Yeah, and it's gonna redirect them. From here, later I can bridge and go into my striking and everything from there. Ah, Let's try this first okay. part. So, boom. so you step out with the, yep, turn the corner, swing the bat, and now come around the corner and step in towards me. Now this, see how here? He wants this to turn over. Oh. Because if he just grabs here, we, we what don't... happens is whoever goes quicker has the mutual. Ah. It's the person that, see when he flips that over, watch this. Watch what happens to my elbow. He throws my elbow offline. Now when he traps, he has the power base. He, his elbow, and the more he tucks his elbow into the center line, closer to your center, the more strength you gain. The further my elbow wings out, the worse it is. And all you grapplers know, you don't want to leave openings like this. Okay. So first part, stepping out. Good, very nice. Now at the same time, he's going to just trap my fingers and try to get the, his thumb around my index finger, or what we call the oh, trigger finger. I do, okay. So from here, he's got this. He turns this over and hooks back into the wrist. So watch this. I'm going to let this. See how you get that hook? That's the tightness oh, right there. Here. Right there. That. Okay. Now when I tell the kids, you think of the knuckles here, this being the fangs of a snake. He's got the eyes of the snake and the two fangs. This is the clinch of the strength. So his last two fingers hold. These two can be completely loose. Now what he wants to do is he wants to make the snake, so as he's come in, to turn and look at the joint of origin. He's gonna go over here as though he's pointing there towards my shoulder. If he's got this index finger, if he pushes that up towards his finger at the same time, yeah, it increases the lock. Mm. And as soon as he gets close to the shoulder, and the closer you get to the shoulder, the greater the pain, he just points down to his lead foot. And you're down. Wow. That's okay. it? <laughs> yeah. And the idea he's is... Faking, he's faking. Not <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. And the idea of this is that, good, in, step, turn it over, trap it, good. Now, he's got this, right? We'll point it at the shoulder. So when you point it at the shoulder, just turn the knuckles like the head of the snake. Ah. Yes, there it is. Very kung fu. Okay. I'll get more precise with this as you go because he's learning it. Goes into the shoulder, like a breaking wave, he brings it back to his feet and you just point where you want him to go. Now, if you were doing this, as you're coming in, you get this. He's gotten to this point here, you got this here. Mm -hmm. But it's now that you do that second baseball swing. See that? Ah. And as you do that, you just lift the knee. <laughs> and it doesn't matter which knee you like. I want this one, I want this one. <laughs> so here, catch the hand, good. Watch it, you don't have the thumb. Roll oh, your hand so like this, that. This roll, your, I, roll your hand like that. Like this? Yeah, start twisting my hand over. See how limited you are right there? Ah. If you go here, yeah, oh, you get way more. This is stopping that me. That stops you, it's a backstop. Okay, that's why. So now he's got this. This, this, he's this. He's got this. He's come over. First correction is to correct the shoulder. Now, if you're watching through the snake's eyes, he wants his eyes looking through here, this way. He wants to angle himself. Now, the last and final part, this. start swing that into, and that really drops the angle. And then he just points it down to where he wants it. If he wanted to go down here, he could point it down to his knee, and there it comes. And I'm telling you, that's excruciating. So you so, can get- so, so it's the rotational part here, yeah. the elbow and down. Yeah, so, so it's like a, there's a lot to this. Mm. So there's the out, bam, tray coming in Boom. to get the position. Now I'm, I'm taking his body weight and his yep. power base off, right? Second, I've got that index finger. I'm hooking in nice and tight into the hook. I'm going back into it, which is facing me towards him. Mm. When I want to do this, I adjust. Now look at this. My oh, eyes man. are behind my hand. From here, it's just that little tuck into front of my belly button. It's called Fuxao. Boom. Oh, He'll try it. Immediately, right? bro. From nowhere, right there. <laughs> no, right? That's crazy. You've got that boom. You got the strike. Bah. You can easily go here, take him in, walk him out. <laughs> go home. <laughs> I told you to get out of here. Go home for the bouncers. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Can that's I try crazy. another one? <laughs> yeah, yeah please. Right, so. Let's try it. Boom. Forward. Good. Trap the fingers. Mm. Good. Turn them over. In, but 
Really? So you don't want the hand, you want this hook in. Oh, this needs to be tighter see, in here. See this here? That, that, you want crease to crease. Ah. Then when you get, you go over, then you point to the shoulder, yeah. line your weight behind it. That's it, now tuck me. Boom. So you go in and you yeah, just point down. Hey. Either, either hey. knee with here or down. So okay. if you look at it, it's a, it, we call it snaking. It looks like a snake as I'm going, can you follow it, Dave? So we're here, boom, it sort of snakes. Oh. <laughs> so it's changing of angles. As soon as I give him a line, he could fight against that line. I'm always changing the lines. And we got here, boom, anything boom, you boom, want. Boom. Wait, if you look wow. at what you're doing, you're going a whole snake. Swing the baseball more. bat as Boom. you come around, beginning of the snake. See how you come back in? You trap the hands. Boom. Either the snake's head goes in and looks back at the shoulder, and then the elbow drops in and goes. Ah, <laughs> I see it now. <laughs> it's like <laughs> breaking yeah. a little. See that? See it's that. It's a very snake-like motion. Step out with Boom. the same side, land Boom. forward, good, good, in. Boom. Now he's aiming towards here. If he was to push this down here, I can roll over, ah, okay? So, so he I wants gotta... to go back in to the shoulder joint on this yeah. one, or at least to the center of my mask. If I was here, he can direct it at the center of the mask, then tuck that elbow under, and he's and got he's still it. there. Oh. Still there. Follow Twisted. the eyes of the snake. Follow the eyes of the snake. Because later on, as you guys do this, as we go from this and we go to the break, boom, that shoots off with the up and overs. This eventually becomes here. Pop, boom, boom that's and that's wild. broken right from there, and then we follow up. I want that last, I like that last, brother. In, come forward, catch mm -hmm. it, good, okay? Yeah. So we've got this, tuck the elbow, direct down. Now, if you want to be extra mean, go on this and gather it down to your rib. <laughs> so if I'm going here, and I go out here, I add, oh, it's just a force multiplier. This tight times eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you can see that we're down here and we're on wrist fight, right? And this comes in. Bam! It works oh my all God. day. Okay? That is great. But you have to learn that it's not just turning over and grabbing a wrist. And if it's I not here, strength either. If it's I go strength. here and I go like this, he can just twist. Yeah, and he runs. Mm. So if I grab here and I grab his wrist this way, grab my hand, now just roll your elbow. Yeah, see? So mm. because we have this line right here, He's lost the, it's just whoever's stronger and quicker. But from mm. here, watch what happens to his elbow. That's what that's, gives me the power the line. It's pushing that out. Then I trap, ah. then I zigzag, and ah. I'm in. On anything, <laughs> say he's here. General rule, if you're on the inside, this taunt out becomes something. A lot of times he may try to get under on one side on me. So that tray just stops that. Mm. I don't give that on. If I go here, I stop that. Then I've got here. Boom. Little hand right here on this side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See that? This is, so, it, this is good because you're seeing him like experience it for the first time. I am. And right? I'm a fighter, guys. <laughs> yeah. It works. This, this works. It works. So imagine all you guys fight, don't say. Train, this works. Bro. And he trains fighters all yes. day. Yes. Yeah.